Winning three Formula One championships. Fangio, Brabham, Stewart, Lauda, Senna, Prost are some to have achieved this incredible feat. And they did so in an era where reliability and car dominance was much less than we see today. But there's another successful champion from this era whose name is rarely mentioned anymore due to controversy off the track. Nelson Piquet began playing tennis at the age of 11. Piquet's father was keen on him becoming a professional tennis player, and Piquet would see enough success in Brazilian tennis to warrant moving to California and carry on his playing. It was here where Nelson would acquire skills in English, but also where he realized that he just didn't quite have what it took to be at the top of tennis. So that idea got smashed out of the court. That was so bad. Well, anyway, it did in Nelson's mind, but not his father's and PK at the age of 14 would start racing instead. However, his dad did not approve, so Nelson had to enter under a misspelling of his mother's maiden name, his mother's maiden name being PK, in order to hide his identity. I actually employ a similar tactic when it comes to paying taxes. Uh, for legal reasons, that's a joke. But realizing his love for racing, Nelson would drop out of his engineering course to get a job as a mechanic, and therefore he could fund his karting career, where he would actually end up becoming the 1971 and 72 Brazilian national champion, which would begin earning him a bit of a reputation. He was then able to race in Brazilian Formula V on the advice of Brazilian Formula One world champion and F1 legend Emerson Fittipaldi. In 1978, PK would enter European racing and had already become somewhat of a prodigy akin to the Max Verstappens and Antonellis of today. Taking part in British Formula 3, he broke the record record for the most wins in a season, which was previously held by none other than Jackie Stewart. And that was more than enough to land him a drive in Formula One. Chances are right now, if you're a new F1 fan, you didn't know any of this. And we'll get to why later on. But for now, let's look at what he was able to achieve in the, pickle of in the pinnacle of motorsport. In 1979, Nelson Piquet would partner then two-time world champion Nicky Lauda for his first full season of F1. Now, if you haven't heard the name Nicky Lauda, huh? but even so, Lauda is probably one of the greatest Formula One drivers of that era. And even legends like Alan Prost credit Lauda to being one of the individuals he learned the most about Grand Prix racing from. So being partnered with Lauda is quite a big honor. In simple terms, it's like when you get partnered with the smart kid for the group project. Nelson actually had a rocky start to F1. In terms of races, he was involved in a few big incidents and crashes in this first year or he would suffer from unreliability, which was common in that era. But in qualifying was where he really shone. He was able to get some top fives in a very midfield car and even out qualified champ Nicky Lauda quite a few times. It was a good year of learning for PK. So skipping forward to 1981, Nelson would see his first championship success and still with the Brabham team. Pre-season, the FIA had made some rule changes, stating that aside from obviously the tires which touch the ground, all Formula 1 cars need a minimum ground clearance of 6 centimeters. But PK's Brabham team came up with a genius solution to get around this rule. They developed a suspension system that when checked by FIA officials would pass all minimum height test rules, so everything's good. But then during the actual race, the car would be lowered in order to gain the advantage over the other teams. Although the Brabham team had this in their back pocket, the Williams cars which had won the championship the last year were still very fast, and Carlos Reutemann would be strong competition for PK. But in the end, it came down to the wire. After taking a win in Germany just six rounds before the end of the season, PK would be much more consistent than Reutemann, who was also battling his teammate Alan Jones. And Nelson would take the championship by just one point, solidifying his name in F1 history. PK wasn't finished there. Just like how I won't stop playing racing games no matter how how many messages tell me to leave for Mario Kart? In 1983, PK would take his BMW Brabham to the championship by just two points over Renault's Alan Prost. This was the first win for not just BMW in F1, but also the first time a turbocharged car won the championship. Again, it was PK's consistency that took him to the top, when in the last round, he was able to finish third after Prost's engine caused him to DNF. In 1985, after the team began slipping back, Nelson decided 
decided it was time to leave the Brabham F1 team, which had brought him into the sport. So for 1986, he was partnered with Nigel Mansell and had a run at Williams. Now, although in 1986, PK finished just behind Nigel in a three-way championship fight between himself, Prost, and Mansell, which Prost would come out on top of, in 1987, PK would take his third and final world championship. And don't worry, guys, I'm still in the process of getting my three championships. I've been practicing on F1 race stars. PK would battle teammate Nigel Mansell for the 87 title. And again, despite arguably being slower than Mansell and actually winning fewer races, it was through his consistency and car understanding that PK grabbed the title with a 12-point lead over his teammate. The best comparison is this. Mansell was so focused on wins, it gave him an all-or-nothing mentality. Whereas PK knew that being good throughout the whole season was much more important for tallying up points. But something strange happened in 1987. That pretty much marked the end of PK's competitiveness. In round two, Imola, he suffered a pretty big crash at the Tamborello curve in qualifying. And that's actually the same corner Senna would lose his life at. He stated that the crash caused him a lot of trauma, both psychologically, citing insomnia, and physically, as he suffered an 80% loss in depth perception. Now, of course, that's crucial to racing a car, and he would only admit this after the fact, as if he told anyone or the team at the time, it's likely he would never have been allowed to race in Formula 1 again. Still, being able to win a world championship with that kind of injury is really impressive. For 1998, he moved to a less competitive Lotus, and he would stay there for two years before switching again to Benetton, where he would stay for 1990 and 1991, even racing with Schumacher for a bit near the end of his career. But he chose to leave F1 at the end of 1991, still regarded as a top-level driver, but seemingly lacking since his championship days, likely as we know now from the injury. But okay, what we have here is an impressive career of a driver who's achieved some massive beats in F1. However, his actions in recent years have cost PK essentially all of his legacy. To give you the kind of idea of the guy PK is, I'll use a few anecdotes. First of all, he shot his grandmother. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> That's just a joke. For a start, he did actually get his driver's license removed for repeatedly speeding and driving irresponsibly and getting parking offenses, as he was living that typical Formula One playboy lifestyle. He was apologetic on the manor and took road safety courses, saying he deserved to be punished as anyone else should for their mistakes. But then there was his conduct towards other drivers. He's referred to Mansell as an uneducated blockhead and called his wife ugly. He would also publicly refer to Senna as gay until as recent as 2020, which all just seems a bit immature, and this is coming from a guy who laughs at the yippie meme. He would then go on in 2021 to refer to Lewis Hamilton as a Portuguese racial slur that I'm obviously not going to repeat, where he was condemned by the whole F1 paddock. The thing is, as soon as he apologized for his comment, videos then surfaced of him alluding to Hamilton losing the championship in 2016 because he's gay. Hamilton, by the way, has never come out as gay. As of July 2020, PK has been banned from Formula 1's paddock, and this is kind of why you never really hear of him. He's been blacklisted from the F1 world due to his rude nature, and his career is definitely an impressive one, sadly let down by the man behind it. Subscribe to not be let down in Formula 1 content, and thank you all for your support. Goodbye!